to discard your mental blinders. Counterthink with Mike Adams is now live on Infowars.com. Welcome to Counterthink with Mike Adams here. I really appreciate the feedback we've been receiving so far. The episodes are getting a lot of play, a lot of people sharing them. This is the show that gives you the opposite side of what you get from the legacy media, the lying mainstream media, as it used to be called. And today, the topic is Obama the traitor. And in this episode, which is based on an extensive amount of research, going to be looking into the various specific ways that former President Barack Hussein Obama has betrayed the United States of America. Now, what's interesting about this is that this is my own research. This is not uh, technically, this is not InfoWars opinion. This is Mike Adams' opinion. And this is an independent analysis because I've started to connect the dots on all the different things that Obama has been doing or did during his administration to betray America. Uh, giving secrets to the um, Iranians, uh, Iranians, the Navy boats, the nuclear fuel, which we'll talk about, the funneling of money and gold to the Iranians to help fund their nuclear program, and also the theft of military personnel records by China. We now believe that Barack Obama was involved in that as well. And keep in mind that this information is now emerging in the context of knowing that, that Barack Obama led the Spygate surveillance investigation, the criminal investigation into Trump campaign officials and President Trump himself. We now know that Barack Obama was engaged in, in treason, in crimes against the United States of America. In fact, I believe he, he was part, even remains a part, of a criminal conspiracy coup to overthrow this country, to nullify the results of an election, and to essentially betray the will of the people and push President Trump out of office, even though he is a duly elected president. So now we know that Obama is not just this innocent angel, this saint, this Nobel Prize winning, you know, Peace Prize winning person that he was made out to be by the mainstream media. And the same media that, of course, said that Obama was the, the smartest person in the world, said that he was this, this beautiful, wonderful human being says every lie that they can think of about President Trump. You know that they're dishonest. You know that they're lying. They're twisting. They're distorting all the time. But they also covered up for Barack Obama. Now, if President Trump had allowed, let's say, a U.S. military drone to be captured by an enemy of America, that would be front page news everywhere. But that's what I believe Barack Obama did, and the mainstream media covered it up. They covered for him. They allowed him to take so many actions that destroy, that, that, that uh, contribute to the destruction of America. And they did that knowingly and willingly. The media did. They are complicit in this. We know, for example, that CNN is complicit in the Spygate scandal. We know that Robert Mueller and James Comey are complicit in covering up the Uranium One conspiracy, the true conspiracy, the scandal that allowed the Clinton Foundation to collect hundreds of millions of dollars in donations overall while funneling, I think it was up to 20% of the U.S. uranium supply into the hands of Russia-controlled companies. No one that I'm aware of has ever connected all these dots in this way like we're going to do right here today on CounterThink. And I'm doing this at, at some amount of risk, if you think about it, because... Journalists are being killed all around the world right now. Journalists are being imprisoned, like in the UK. And the FBI is picking people up off the street in the United States and interrogating them to try to get them to turn against Alex Jones and Infowars. And if you're outspoken, you are being targeted. But I can't remain silent. And that's why I have this show, CounterThink, so that we can bring you independent analysis and truth as we see it, truth that is in the interest of preserving this constitutional republic and saving America from globalists and traitors who are trying to destroy it from within. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break with more on CounterThink with Mike Adams. Prepare to discard your mental blinders. Counterthink with Mike Adams, live on Infowars.com. 
If I told you that a former president of the United States acted with malice to deliberately share key military secrets with enemies of America, you might be surprised to hear that unless you know the true history of Obama. And the Obama deception, of course, is one of the films produced here by Alex Jones and Infowars many years ago. And that film dared, dared to point out the ways that Obama was planning to be a traitor, to destroy America, to destroy America economically. But what we now know many years after that film, and remember that film came out at a time when you couldn't say anything negative about Obama without being labeled a racist. Even if you just disagree with his policies, you didn't disagree with his skin color. You didn't disagree with his heritage. You could say, oh, I think Barack Obama is a handsome, charismatic man, but his policies are evil and he's a traitor to America. And they would scream, racist, you're a racist. You're like, what's racist in that statement? Nothing. Obama, he's a, he's a charismatic person. He's got charisma. That's one reason he was elected. So back in 2017, I did call Obama a sleeper cell traitor and an enemy of America. And this story got a lot of attention from many people who agreed with it. And of course, a few trolls who attacked it. But today I'm going to lay out for you point by point why I believe Obama is a traitor and why I believe he needs to be arrested, indicted, given a fair trial and given a chance to defend himself because I believe in due process. I believe in the rule of law in America, but I also believe that Obama violated that law. So let's get into it. First thing. Obama delivered a U.S. military drone to Iran, and I believe he did it deliberately. This was December 2011. It's called the RQ-170 Sentinel, and it was claimed by the fake news media that this was a GPS spoofing incident that said that Iran had spoofed the GPS controls for that drone and guided it into a runway, capturing it fully intact. Let me tell you why that's total nonsense. The GPS signals are military encrypted signals. You'd have to be able to break, I don't know how many bits it is, maybe 512 bit or 1024 bit encryption. You'd have to be able to break that encryption in order to control that drone. I don't think Iran has the ability to break that encryption. I don't even think the Russians have the ability to do that. In fact, America doesn't. You'd have to have a quantum computing system in order to break it. You'd also have to be able to interfere with those signals at very high altitude because the drone Let's say, let's say this desk is the surface of the Earth and the drone is flying up here at, let's say, 40,000 feet, which they're capable of flying at. And then the satellites are much, much higher, of course. The GPS satellites are in orbit, not quite geostationary orbit. They're not that far away. They're closer, but they are, you know, miles above the Earth, we'll say, many miles. You'd have to interfere with the signals between the satellite, uh, I'm sorry, between the satellites and the drone. So you'd have to interfere with the signal up at very high altitude. I don't think... Iran has the ability to do that, and I don't think they have the ability to break the encryption. I think the whole thing was faked, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. And by faked, what I mean is I think that, that Obama's military, some traitor inside the military, guided that drone into the runway at Iran and landed it there and gave it to the Iranians, and that that was done on purpose. Now... I'm not the only one who believes this. Michael Savage, from his book, Scorched Earth, also believes the same thing. And he, he said that an agent did it to us with one of our most advanced drones two years ago. He wrote this book, what, in 2013 or 2014 is when it came out. And in that book, Michael Savage was also talking about Obama delivering the U.S. Navy vessel to Iran again. So we have a second incident January of 2016, we have the Riverine Squadron 1, which is based in San Diego. Ten U.S. Navy sailors were taken hostage by Iran as they captured the ship, which was said to have just sort of conked out and run aground. Actually, I'm sorry, it was, it was two ships, two Navy Riverine boats, not ships, but small boats. They have advanced navigation gear, and so they have a... Uh, they have valuable technology on board that the Iranians wanted to be able to capture. In addition, this helped create 
an incident that made the United States look weak because the 10 sailors were required to go on camera. John Kerry apologized to Iran, and then Obama followed up with another apology, making it a massive propaganda win for Iran. And why is it that the drone and two riverine boats both ended up in the hands of Iranian officials? The answer is it's not a coincidence. This was all done on purpose because Iran confiscated the GPS gear out of those boats before they released the boats back to the United States. They were after the GPS equipment. And you know why they're after that? Because they could not break the encryption. So they needed to actually have the hardware because that hardware has the decryption circuitry in it. And by using that hardware, they could attach that hardware to some other vessel or some other airplane or even a missile system. And they could use U.S. military encrypted GPS signals on another vessel because they have that hardware now. So you see how Obama actually delivered this to Iran. And this is at a time when Iran was pursuing nuclear weapons ballistic deployment development. What a perfect vehicle to put that GPS equipment on, a ballistic missile. Use the, the U.S. military technology against U.S. allies such as Israel. And this was not long after Israel was, of course, assassinating Iranian nuclear scientists. And Israel and the United States had cooperated on the Stuxnet virus. The Stuxnet virus, of course, was built to be deployed and to invade the Iranian centrifuge systems and to cause errors to happen that would destroy the, the nuclear fuel without generating overt signs of failure until many months after it happened. So this was a way for Israel and the United States to delay the Iranian nuclear program. So there were elements inside the United States that are trying to prevent Iran from having nuclear weapons, and those are the what we would call today the pro-Trump, anti-Obama elements. But then there were other elements run by Obama that were trying to deliver nuclear weapons and other military technology to Iran. And Obama, of course, despises Israel. And he despises Netanyahu, and we'll get to that in a minute. So you've got two different factions hard at work. But one of the ways that Obama was doing this was by delivering technology to Iran. Back to Michael Savage from his Scorched Earth book. He says the whole thing was a setup. That's a direct quote of Michael Savage. He says, in my estimation, there's a double agent inside this. It's somebody inside the Obama administration who did this to the U.S. Navy. That agent did it to us with one of our most advanced drones two years ago. See, he's talking about both of these incidents. You may have forgotten that already because you have no press other than a few men left in the media, a few websites where you can find the truth, such as this one. Somebody in the administration, he says, sent our most advanced drone to Iran two years ago. It landed without a scratch, like a new Buick in a showroom. Our most advanced drone was delivered on a silver platter to the Iranians on the watch of that smiling puppet on the stage, that lying, smiling cafe singer getting away with murder and treason. He's talking about Barack Obama. And then he says, oh, two boats suddenly conk out and run aground and they're rescued by Iran. Hmm. The nine men and one woman aboard were detained by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards on Farsi Island. The unnamed sailor said it was a mistake. Quote, it was our fault and we apologize for our mistake nonsense. U.S. Navy vessels don't just run aground in Iran. They have advanced navigation and communications equipment. This was deliberate. Michael Savage wraps it up and says, my guess is that somebody gave the codes, he's talking about navigation codes, to the Iranians, who then jammed the boat's computer systems. The computer systems stopped the boats, they went aground, and they were given to the Iranians on a silver platter. Our advanced technology, he says, was given to the Iranians, just as it was with the drones. Then we see the apology and we hear John Kerry congratulating himself for his great relationship with the terrorists in Iran. And nobody in the media sees the bigger picture. Sound familiar? Well, there's much more to this. We'll get to the $1.7 billion in cash and the $33.6 billion in gold that was transferred to Iran under the orders of Barack Obama, who, again, I believe is a treasonous traitor to America. Much more as we come back on Counterthink.
Take the red pill before viewing. Counterthink with Mike Adams. Spread the word about Counterthink. You can go to counterthink.com and view all the episodes. They also air Sundays at 6 p.m. Central at infowars.com. And the funding for this show, of course, comes from infowarsstore.com. So be sure to visit and support that store, offering uh, an incredible assortment of nutritional and uh, health products, superfood products, and even some great coffee that I was just having a, a taste of uh, during the break. It's some really, really amazing coffee. And by the way, I, I probably have a little bit too much sun. Um, <laughs> if you're wondering why... I, I, my face might be a little bit red today, my forehead. I was out, I was out uh, doing some rifle ranging yesterday on my property to see how far of a, uh, of, of a rifle shot I could, I could make on the property because I'm into long range shooting. And I'm not going to tell you the exact range because that might give uh, people too much information, but I have a target zone that's over a thousand yards away. So that's, that's tons of fun. Maybe one day I'll shoot some video and show you uh, taking thousand-yard shots of cinder blocks with uh, maybe a 338 Lapua Magnum. That would be a lot of fun. Talk about counterthink. Send some lead a thousand yards away into some steel targets. Lots of fun. But let's get back to instead of you know shooting steel targets, let's talk about how Obama has had tried to shoot down America because that's that's real crime. That's that's real treason right there. He delivered 1.7 billion dollars in cash to Iran for funding the nuclear program. In February of 2016, as part of this nuclear deal with Iran, Obama released $100 billion in frozen assets, and he called it a deal that would deny Iran the ability to acquire nuclear weapons. So let's, uh, let's really back up and understand this. At the same time that he is delivering $1.7 billion in cash, he flew it in on cargo planes. It was on pallets. Cash on pallets, like money laundering, like a James Bond movie. This is something the villain would do, but it was Barack Obama. And he delivered it to Iran to fund their nuclear program while turning around and having a two-faced explanation to the American people and saying, they'll never get nuclear weapons now because we just struck a deal with Iran. We're denying them access to nuclear weapons, he said. But he was lying because he's a traitor. He's a lying traitor. But it's not just the $1.7 in cash, and it's not just the $100 billion in assets that were unfrozen. According to other sources that I'll mention here, Iran also received $33.6 billion in cash and gold from the United States. This was covered by the Washington Free Beacon, where you've got uh, Mark Dubowitz, the executive director of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He says... Quote, Iran may have received an additional $33.6 billion in secret cash and gold payments facilitated by the Obama administration between 2014 and 2016. This is according to testimony provided before Congress by an expert on last summer's nuclear agreement with Iran. Now, how did he do this? How did he pull this off? You see, there were banking restrictions on Iran. You couldn't use the normal banking system to, to transfer money and wire funds and and engage in normal, you know, global business transactions. So they created a money laundering system to bypass the electronic banking restrictions. Now, why is this such an important aha moment? Because when you look at what we know now about Spygate, you know that they bypassed the normal five eyes system of surveillance that the UK and US and other governments are supposed to use for official surveillance on targets of the government. Instead, in Spygate, they went directly to UK spies who back-channeled the information spying on Trump and even, you know, inserting people to interact with Trump campaign officials in order to plant false stories and gather false evidence that they were spinning themselves. They back-channeled that in the same way that Obama back-channeled the electronic banking, uh, well, he, he bypassed the electronic banking system and back-channeled money laundering to Iran. So you see, this is a pattern of the Obama administration. They back-channel everything. They don't follow the rules. I mean, why would we ever expect them to follow the rules? They're committing treason. They're trying to give nuclear weapons to America's enemies. Enemies who, you know, John Kerry was recently spotted in a, in a well, I'm sorry. John Kerry has done deals with an Iranian leader who was recently spotted shouting on a video, death to America. John Kerry's, you could say, best friend, BFF in Iran, 
was shouting death to America. And Obama was thinking it. Obama was doing it from the White House. And John Kerry was someone who was helping to carry this out, helping to embarrass America, and helping, no doubt, to pursue the money laundering. And this is, I don't have any proof on this next statement here, but in my assessment, I believe that people like John Kerry and probably Hillary Clinton and maybe Barack Obama were getting massive kickbacks from Iran. Because we're talking about up to $33.6 billion in secret money laundered cash and gold going to Iran, plus the $100 billion in unfrozen assets and, and other funds that we'll talk about here in a second. I think there were kickbacks to these people. Because you notice when President Trump pulled us out of that bad Iranian nuclear deal, who screamed the loudest? It was John Kerry, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama but especially people like Kerry. Why were they screaming so loudly? What, why is it such a big deal to them? I think because they were getting kickbacks. Again, I can't prove that, but it would fit the pattern of what we're covering right now, and I believe that needs to be in investigated in more detail. But getting back to the money laundering, they bypassed the, the formal financial system, and they used cash, and they used physical gold. And I got to ask you, how much physical gold was stolen from the vaults of the United States of America and actually delivered to Iran on cargo planes under President Obama. Since we can't audit the gold in America, it seems, because nobody in government wants to allow that to happen, how do we know how much gold is missing? Is it possible, and I believe the answer is yes, it's possible that under Barack Obama, deep state elements within the U.S. government actually looted gold vaults of America. And they put that gold on a plane and they flew it and delivered it to Iran to help fund Iran's nuclear weapons program. Fast forward. From the beginning of this, you know, we're talking about going back to 2011 uh, with the drone situation and then, and then transferring money in 2014 and 2016. But in the middle of that, in October of 2015, Obama sought to supply Iran with nuclear fuel so they could build nuclear weapons. And some of this comes from the former president of Argentina, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, who said that she told the General Assembly that former Obama administration officials tried to convince her to provide the Islamic Republic of Iran with nuclear fuel. She met with a man named Gary Samor, S-A-M-O-R-E, Samor, a White House advisor to Obama. And Samor sought enriched nuclear fuel from Argentina to essentially launder that and funnel it into Iran. And this, is, this is what Kirshner is saying. And I realize Kirshner's got her own scandals and her own, her own you know, problems and so on. Nobody's probably clean in all of this, but she says that Obama sent people to come talk to her to provide nuclear fuel to Iran. And she said, quote, they came to us, they, they, they came to ask us, Argentines, to provide the Islamic Republic of Iran with nuclear fuel. Rouhani was not in office yet. It was Ahmadinejad's administration. And the negotiations had already started, she said. And now, later, some more actually confirmed the request and confirmed shifting nuclear fuel to Iran and Russia. And we'll talk about that in more detail when we come back. You see how the pieces are starting to fit together? This is a very big deal. This is a pattern of treason against America and arming America's enemies with nuclear weapons. We'll be right back on CounterThink. Countering the brain-dead propaganda of the status quo, this is CounterThink with Mike Adams, right here on InfoWars. I don't know what the, the complete role of Gary Samore is in all of this. I think that deserves more research. But he worked for Obama, and he confirmed this request of shifting nuclear fuel to Iran and Russia. And this was done by, here, here, here's how it was done. It was explained as a way to eliminate nuclear fuel from Iran, but what they did is they took the, the, the low enriched uranium fuel, the stockpile that Iran had, and they shifted that to Russia. And in exchange for that, they brought in fresh fuel for the Tehran research reactor from places like Russia. So there was actually a fuel exchange taking place according to the research and the sources that I have on this. France agreed at one point to manufacture fuel for the Tehran research reactor. And 
this this whole thing about eliminating Iran's low-grade nuclear fuel was just really a, a cover story for the whole switch in, in the fuel. And then Gary Samore at one point headed up the group called United Against Nuclear Iran. And but he quit that organization to join Obama's pro-nuclear scheme at one point. So think about this. This man, again, we need to do more research into some more and find out where he is in all of this. But he was against providing Iran with nuclear weapons. But somehow then he joined Obama's team, which then provided Iran with nuclear weapons, fuel and know-how and the funding to build nuclear weapons. Now, some more, by the way, is the author of the so-called definitive guide to the Iran nuclear deal at belfercenter.org. That's B-E-L-F-E-R, belfercenter.org. You can read his guide to the nuclear, the Iran nuclear deal. But let's, let's move on. Maybe that's a subject that we can research in more detail for a future show. Now, as all of this was happening, keep in mind that Barack Obama was directly interfering with the elections in Israel. He was trying to defeat Netanyahu. Because, of course, Netanyahu is pro-Israel and has a good relationship now with, with Trump or, you know, Trump-like forces in America at the time. So Obama wants to destroy Israel and he wants to empower Iran. So, of course, he was trying to, to in essence, overthrow Netanyahu. Now, remember, this is the same guy who says that America has never interfered with anybody else's elections or, or some paraphrase, you know, version of that. He says that his administration, Obama's, never had any scandals, which is an absolute lie. And he condemns Trump and Trump campaign officials falsely accusing them of interfering in the elections in the United States. While all of this was going on, Obama was deliberately interfering with elections in Israel. So, wow, talk about speaking with a forked tongue. The Obama administration funded a 350000 grant for a campaign infrastructure initiative to overthrow Netanyahu. And the grant was made to the One Voice Movement which launched its program called Victory 15, or as it was known, V15. And this was covered on cnsnews.com. The State Department, under the U.S. Senate Permaculture Subcommittee on Investigations, literally, there is a group called that, PSI is what it's called, PSI. Yeah, sound familiar, like a PSYOP, but it's PSI, the Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations, PSI, gave $350,000 roughly in U.S. US taxpayer-funded grants to a political group in Israel. And this was used to try to influence the Israeli vote against Benjamin Netanyahu in the March 2015 election. All right. So let's, let's back up and summarize some of this. And I'm sorry, I'm, all, I'm looking at my notes throughout all this. This is a very note-heavy research program, so I hope you don't mind. But I have to reference these notes. It's too much to keep it in my head all at once. But Netanyahu has since exposed Iran's secret nuclear program and shown that the Iranians have continued to work on nuclear weapons development in secret because there was this massive cache of uh, documents and CD-ROMs and Israeli intelligence got in there and found those and then brought them back to Israel and held a big press conference that you saw, you know, what was it, a couple of months ago. 100,000 secret documents and 183 CDs providing what Netanyahu described as, quote, conclusive proof that Iran was working on the nuclear deal even after, I'm sorry, that Iran was working on nuclear weapons development even after they signed this deal with Obama, which Obama lied and said stopped them from working on nuclear weapons. But this evidence was buried. All of this was hidden during Obama's nego negotiations with Iran. Netanyahu says that these documents contain, quote, incriminating, incriminating documents, incriminating charts, incriminating presentations, incriminating blueprints, incriminating photos, incriminating videos, and more. Boy, he likes that word, incriminating. But there's a, there's a lot of dirt there that shows that I Iran was most definitely working on nuclear weapons even after they signed that deal with Obama. And it's called Project Ahmad which aimed to design, produce, and test five nuclear warheads, each with a 10 kiloton TNT yield. Now think about it. Wouldn't one of those warheads be a great place for Iran to use that captured GPS equipment from the Navy boats? Remember, they've got two sets of GPS equipment because they captured two boats. And if there were redundant systems on those boats, there might be two systems on each boat, meaning they perhaps have four GPS 
military systems from the United States that were delivered to Iran by Obama through the faked boat false flag hoax. Plus, they've got GPS equipment on the drone. So now they've got five sets, conceivably, of GPS equipment, and they wanted to build five nuclear warheads on during Project Ahmad. Are you starting to put the pieces together? You see, you see why these dots have to be connected? All right, now we start, then, then we get into Uranium One and the Robert Mueller cover-up and the James Comey cover-up and the Hillary Clinton Foundation. There's so much, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to keep moving on this just to make it in, in the show. There's so much, this should be several hours, but Obama knew Russia was providing nuclear know-how to Iran because you see, Iran needed nuclear technical information to build the bombs and build the missiles and, and the delivery systems. They turned to Russia for that. John Solomon warned in an article in March of this year, 2018, he said that a former undercover informant provided evidence to the FBI during President Obama's first term that Russia was assisting Iran's nuclear program even as billions in new U.S. businesses followed to, uh, flowed I'm sorry, to Moscow's uranium industry. Now, can you put up that infographic for this show? Because I want to show the, the, the flow of information you see Iran there in the upper right-hand corner. You've got enriched nuclear fuel and technical know-how coming from Russia with Putin there. And then at the same time, you've got Obama with John Kerry and Hillary Clinton providing the military drone, the Navy vessels, the $33.6 billion in cash, and the nuclear weapons fuel via Argentina. So Russia was providing the know-how. And the Americans were providing the GPS technology for ballistic guidance systems plus the cash to power this entire program. And as this was happening, Hillary Clinton was collecting hundreds of millions of dollars in the Clinton Foundation for rubber stamping approval of selling uranium one, uh, I'm sorry, selling uranium supplies, a strategic reserve in the United States, to Russia-linked companies. And then after these people lose the election, they turn around and say Trump was working with the Russians. Well, I ask you, look at this graphic. Who's working with the Russians? It's Obama. It's John Kerry. It's Hillary Clinton. These are the people working with the Russians to give Iran nuclear weapons and guidance systems technology and funding and laundered money in order for them to be able to pull this off. But th there's more. There's more. It's like an infomercial. Just wait. There's more. It's incredible. There was a payment network, according to this undercover informant who re reported this to the FBI. Of course, the FBI buried it because of James Comey, right? They buried it. A payment network to move funds between Russia and Iran with kickbacks to Americans, just like we talked about a couple of, of segments ago on this show. Kickbacks to Americans. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was part of what was reported to the FBI, but of course the media completely... Uh, just discards all this information. The United States was also providing favorable decisions to the Russian nuclear industry in 2010 and 2011, clearing the way for Moscow to buy large U.S. uranium assets. And this was done under Uranium One, Robert Mueller, James Comey, the fixers for Hillary Clinton, the cover-up, the treason. And we're not even done. We've got one more segment here on Counter Things, so stay with us. We'll be right back to wrap this up. Exposing the corporate media assaults on your reality. It's Counterthink with Mike Adams. We're connecting the dots here today on the Obama treason against the United States of America and how he funneled money, nuclear fuel, nuclear weapons know-how to Iran. He sought to interfere with elections in Israel. And it's very clear that... Hillary Clinton, uh, Robert Mueller, James Comey, and others were involved in covering up the transfer of uranium fuel to Russia-linked companies. But there's more to this. There's one more big piece that we've got to cover. But first, Roger Stone. Here's a quote from Roger Stone, who says the result of all of this was that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton effectively handed Russia and Vladimir Putin control over as much as 20% 
of the uranium production capacity of the United States. Roger Stone knows about this. Alex Jones has talked about this on his show. Many other people are fully aware of what is happening. Uh, you've got authors, researchers, other websites as well covering this. But the legacy media, the fake news, mainstream news media, or what used to be mainstream, refuses to cover any of this. And they would rather focus on what Melania Trump is wearing. Or they would rather focus on Roseanne Barr's latest tweet rather than point out that Obama was a dangerous and, and remains a dangerous traitor to this country who sought to arm America's enemies and transfer military technology to America's enemies. These are acts of treason. These are acts of sedition. These are just beyond normal crimes. These are crimes against the United States of America, and they need to be prosecuted as such or investigated as such, in my view. But there's, there's one more big piece here. There was a hack of the Office of Personnel Management, OPM. And this hack allowed Communist China to acquire detailed personnel records of 21 million U.S. military personnel, including, by the way, fingerprints of 5.6 million military personnel in the United States. We are talking about social security numbers. We're talking about home addresses the names, the history, the practically a portfolio on all 21 million people. This is a treasure trove that can be used against America by America's enemies. And you can bet that communist China is out there peddling this and trading it with other countries that, that are attempting to bring down the United States. And they could be building hit lists, assassination lists of who to assassinate in America based on what they found in that list. It's, um, it's pretty mind-boggling, says Joseph Lorenzo Hall, the chief technologist at the Center for Democracy and Technology. He told the Washington Post, he says, I'm surprised they didn't have structures in place to determine the number of fingerprints compromised earlier during the investigation. But Obama had what was called a, a lack of urgency regarding the situation. They treated it like a PR crisis and not a national security crisis, said Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska in response to an OPM statement regarding the theft of the fingerprints. And at the same time this was happening, Chinese President Xi was meeting with Barack Obama in Washington. So at the very same time that Obama was shaking the hand of this communist leader, he was allowing the theft of 21 million military personnel records to go to China. And then he was passive when it came to punishing China. He was passive. He did not punish China, and Obama allowed the system, the personnel in the military, to ignore repeated warnings of system vulnerability. He failed to adopt basic cybersecurity practices, and they wasted millions of dollars maintaining outdated technology as if Obama was actually funneling money to keep the old systems up and running, knowing that they were vulnerable to hackers, allowing this transfer of technology to take place. This and then in February, Cyber Command head Admiral Mike Rogers testified before Congress that China regularly violated an agreement that she and Obama had made earlier for Beijing to curtail its cyber activities. So you see, while Obama is telling America that I've ordered the Chinese to stop, you know, hacking us and stop engaging in cyber warfare, in fact, the Chinese were actually cranking it up. And Obama was lying to America about that in the same way that he lied to America about what was happening with Iran. He said that they had stopped the Iranian nuclear uh, development program, when in fact he funded it. So you put all this together, and here's what you have. Obama, think about this. At the same time that he was tearing apart America in terms of America's culture, that he was pitting blacks against whites in race, uh, racial warfare and race-based animosity. At the same time that he was turning the American people against police in streets all across America, you know, Ferguson and Baltimore and many other places. At the same time that he was gutting America's economy and celebrating the fact that he had millions more Americans on food stamps because they were jobless, that the, the, the economy was headed for a train wreck status under Obama and it was all deliberate. At the same time that was happening, Obama funded Iran's covert nuclear program using U.S. cash that was laundered internationally and flown in on a cargo plane. 
He transferred U.S. military technology to Iran via drones, uh, one drone and multiple Navy ships. He allowed the breach of military personnel records to go to the hands of communist China. He covered up all of this for Iran by falsely claiming that an agreement would prevent Iran from gaining nuclear weapons, so he had a cover story. He fueled the nuclear weapons development by allowing the Uranium One scandal to go down, which was also covered up by people like Robert Mueller, and it involved big paybacks to Hillary Clinton via the scandalous donations to the Clinton Foundation, which is a massive racketeering and criminal money laundering fraud. But this fuel was then whitewashed through Russia to provide enriched nuclear fuel to Iran. And in doing all of this, Obama conspired with America's enemies. And he did it while lying to the American people. And the press in the United States was complicit in all of this. Now, that's my report. I barely fit it in an hour. Granted, we're, we're connecting dots here. We can't prove every assertion made in this program. This needs to be seriously investigated by members of Congress. This needs to be investigated by a new special counsel. I believe, based on my research and based on the history of what we know about Barack Obama, I believe that he is a treasonous traitor, a criminal, who deliberately sought to destroy America and empower America's enemies. I believe that he lied about his entire history, that he is a fraud, and that he continues to be a threat to this country, and that he must be uh, investigated and indicted. Given a fair trial, like I said, we're not here for, you know, mob justice or anything. Given a fair trial, but the evidence against him is overwhelming. And I believe that whistleblowers, if they were protected, would come out and testify against Barack Obama. But Obama prosecuted more whistleblowers than any president in the history of our country. People tried to come out under Obama, and they were vilified. And, and some of them were sent to prison. Many were sent to prison. So while Obama was betraying America and aiding America's enemies, he was having whistleblowers thrown in prison who were trying to expose all of these crimes that were deliberately engineered to try to bring down America and to share America's military weapons technology with America's enemies, including communist China and Iran and probably some other countries in there as well. So what do you think? Does it make sense? Does it fit a pattern? Because I, I think that, you know, Obama has this public face where he talks about how he's so wonderful and how he's so brilliant and so intelligent and how much, you know, he loves America and, and this is what the media says about him. But you know who really loves America? It's President Donald Trump. Donald Trump loves America because he is, he's severing the heads of the deep, the deep state snakes that were put in place by Obama and Clinton and John Kerry and, you know, James Comey and others, John Brennan. Trump loves America, and he's trying to drain the swamp, and he's trying to hold these criminals accountable for their crimes against this country. And thank God that we have some still-functioning system of democracy, the Electoral College, where we still have a chance to put people in power like President Trump who are willing to go after the deep state and try to expose the massive criminality that took place in this country for eight years under Obama and former Secretary Clinton and former President Bill Clinton and former DOJ head Loretta Lynch and many others. The massive criminal conspiracy, I believe, is just now really starting to unravel. And what I've given you here today, this is a small piece. Think about it. The treason against this country is a small piece of the real story of how dangerous these criminals, these Obama-era criminals and Clinton-era criminals have been against this country. We must hold them accountable to the rule of law. Spread this message, share this video. This is counterthink.com. My name is Mike Adams. I'm an independent journalist here at Infowars.com just trying to bring you the truth and save this country from treason and betrayal. Thanks for watching.